Good morning, homesteaders. I want to talk a little bit about how the uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 virus is affecting us here on our homestead right now and how it might in the near future. Well, here's how it's affecting us right now. It's not affecting us at all. And that's kind of the point, right? It's kind of the point of this lifestyle and to do what we're doing is to avoid or try to avoid these issues like a global pandemic or rioting in the cities, i.e. Uh, Antifa in Portland, so on and so forth. But right now, it's not affecting us at all. Why? Because we have gotten ourselves into a place where we can be more self-sufficient, right? We are trying to grow all of our own food. We are uh, not preppers at all, but we are prepared people. And I think that's important for everyone to everybody to do and people used to do that in this country and then we got fat happy and lazy and uh, lazy is the key word we stopped thinking about uh, a little bit into the future and maybe a couple of what ifs and started thinking about you know what's going on just in this moment and I think that's kind of silly well I was gonna walk and talk with you around the property it's beautiful green right now it's been raining a lot spring showers and there's a lot of flowers out but it's raining again right now. So here we are next to the tractor. All right, let's continue with our conversation. We moved out of the city about four and a half years ago, roughly, to become more self-sufficient. And I'm going to get into something a little bit later. Maybe a lot of my Christian followers will uh, appreciate. But so we're more self-sufficient and we're away from big crowds of people. We live a half an hour or 25 minutes, give or take, away from a city of 100,000 people. That's not a big city. Um, our nearest town is five miles away and it's like 1,100 people. And my wife works in the larger city. Uh, a lot of you know we're in East Texas. But there aren't huge crowds of people, which is very helpful when something like this crazy global pandemic is happening. And even our local grocery stores are taxed to the limit because people don't think nowadays, you know, I've got neighbors out here in the country, but they don't grow their own food. And uh, I think that's a big mistake because our local little grocery store is completely out of everything. The next closest is the Walmart, uh, and that's about 22 minutes away. And they are okay. They have a good stock of things, except they don't have any toilet paper or baby wipes, or milk, or eggs, or meat. Although, that's fine for me, because I stopped eating meat a long time ago, but uh, their vegetable section is fully stocked. The canned goods are all also uh, pretty picked over, but they're getting a decent amount of stuff in. But that doesn't matter for us as much, because we're working on this gorgeous garden out here. We're growing our own stuff. Now, it's very difficult to do so, and to get to that point, is uh, it takes a number of years to do which is why i'm saying if you're thinking about this lifestyle do it now it has afforded me a lot of comfort and i am thankful to god for that because he's the one who led us here it has afforded us a lot of comfort because we're not only away from that uh, diseased area well kind of and i'll talk about that in a second but uh, we have been blessed with this piece of property where we can grow our own food and you can do that on any size piece of property. The larger, the better, of course. But uh, you can do that. You can start to do that today. And I would recommend that. Back in the 40s, during World War II, people were encouraged to start victory gardens because supplies were short. It was all going to the war front in the war effort. And things were starting to be rationed, especially in, like, uh, Great Britain. I, I not... 100% sure of my history here and how much rationing took place, but uh, yeah, people were encouraged to start their own gardens, and I encourage you to do the same thing. It's not only therapeutic, it helps feed your family. So the, it's, uh, it's a win-win for everybody, and uh, there are a lot of benefits to it. So this also gives us the ability to share with friends. What am I talking about? I'm talking about I have a difficult time growing certain things like the past couple years tomatoes have been horrible in my garden but i've been able to grow 
cantaloupe like crazy and carrots like crazy and a few other things and uh, with some other friends who are doing the same thing we exchange you know my friend Pete he's got a great garden and what did he bring me I can't even remember we, we exchanged something the other day uh, I had another friend come over and he found some toilet paper at the Dollar General uh, and I grabbed a couple of packets just to be safe and I gave him some carrots because we're overloaded on carrots. So perfect. A great way to trade and barter with your friends. Now let me talk to my Christian friends. Okay, so all of my Bible reading Christian friends need to understand last day events. And those last day events correlate, at, they're out throughout the whole Bible, but most prevalently in Matthew 24, Luke 21, the whole book of Revelation, and the whole book of Daniel. Daniel, and they correlate. Daniel and Revelation correlate. So, if you're paying attention and you're studying, not just reading, studying those books of the Bible, then you'll notice some interesting things about where we are in the stream of time. Now, is this crisis the last crisis? No, but they're getting more frequent. World calamities are getting more frequent. And that's documented. And things are increasingly getting worse. And even my secular friends can see that. So I place my hope in Jesus Christ and the hope of things unseen, which is uh, in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. So that gives me great comfort and I can put a smile on my face even in this type of crisis. Which, if you study the Bible, is no crisis at all. This is a tiny bit that are a tiny crisis compared to what is to come in as we get closer to Christ's second coming. So as an aside, this is how much rain we've gotten in the last uh, day and a half. We've got our own little waterfall here and a runoff across the road. This is usually a dry creek, so it's usually totally dry. It's essentially just runoff, and you can see how much water is coming into it right now. So let me talk about why the virus could affect us soon. And that is because my wife is a nurse. And at her hospital, she has an entire north side of one floor of the hospital now that is cordoned off. It is now a, uh, what do they call it? It's just completely sealed off. I don't know the word for it. It's sealed off and nobody's allowed in there um, because there are 16 patients whom may or may not, may or may not, um, have the coronavirus. And uh, one person from our locality has died. That is one of the deaths in Texas. She works there, and yes, they are short on masks. And it's called PPE, personal protective equipment. They are short on things and they're not the greatest. Who knows why? I don't understand why our hospitals are going through that. It's kind of annoying. Um, but uh, she is potentially, at some point, uh, she, she has a higher risk of being exposed to it. So she told me not to go to the store. She would go to the store after she come home from work. And that's, that's fine by me, but that is something we're going to deal with, and I think we're both comfortable because we have our faith to hold on to. So if we get sick, we get sick, and we know that God protects you through a storm, not necessarily always from the storm. Now, of course, He can protect you from the storm, and we're thankful to Him for that. But we're also thankful being protected through a storm. So the storm may be going on around us and may be affecting us a little bit, but he'll bring us through it. So again, we're good. Put on a happy face, keep calm, carry on, because our hope is in something greater. Now for all my Christian friends who study a little bit longer, and this is relating to homesteading or being in the country, major characters in the Bible who spoke of Christ coming and Christ himself, himself, where did they live? They lived outside of the city, okay? So when Christ was in his ministry, he did not stay in the city. 
he retired out to the mountains or retired outside of the city to study it whenever he had uh, completed his daily uh, ministry in that city. So did John the Baptist. He lived a simple life out in the wilderness. So did Elijah. He lived away from the city in a little stone house. So did, and so did, and so did. You can go on and on, and I think this is an object lesson in the Bible for us. Now, for all the members of my church who understand that one of the founders of our church is a last day prophet, then you need to heed her words that are in sync with the Word of God and don't supersede it, but are in sync with it. The call to country living. Because those words were told to us a long time ago. So, if you're watching this, and you know who you are, then I implore you to heed those words and to move yourself out to a quiet country lifestyle where you can provide for your family and you can commune with God easier. And most of all, work on your character to become more Christ-like. He is our example, and a Christ-like character is what we are to have. So to conclude, is this crisis affecting us now? No. Will it in the future? Maybe. Am I worried about it? No. Because why? Because of my faith. And I want that to be a comfort to you, whether you are a Christian or not, and you're watching this, I want that to be a comfort to you that someone cares about you, he created you, and he wants the best for you. So do not worry. Love you all, stay prepared, and I'll see you on the next video.